welcome to ATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today, let us discuss about cellulitis and its management from emergency room. Cellulitis means infection of a part of skin that is dermis and subcutaneous tissue. Mainly dermis is involved here. The risk factors are mainly skin injuries, diabetic patients, immunodeficiency patients, chronic venous insufficiency patient, lymphatic obstruction, IV drug users, malignancies. These are the common risk factors. Most common cause for skin infection is, is the injury of the skin at any point of the time in the skin. Streptococcus is one of the most common cause for skin infection. It can be uh, sometimes associated with Staphylococcus. There are a lot of other bacteria also in, involved other than Streptococcus and Staphylococcus. So that depends on the patient's clinical condition, in immunocompromised patients or chronic ulcer patients, gram-negative organism may replace gram-positive organism like E. coli, Pseudomonas, all these things. Opportunistic organism like fungus, viruses, non-tuberculous mycobacteria, helicobacter, cryptococcus, physidium, varicella, herpes, all these things can also produce skin infections and inflammation. Periorbital cellulitis, staphylococcus aureus, streptococcus pneumonia, group A streptococcus, buccal cellulitis, H influenza, perianal cellulitis, group A streptococcus, mastectomy, lumpectomy, non-group A streptococcus. Liposuction, post liposuction, patients can have cellulitis, that is streptococcus or peptostreptococcus. Early postoperative wound infection, group A streptococcus, diabetic ulcers, aerobic gram negative bacilli. So, when we discuss about cellulitis, the most common organism is always gram positive cocci like streptococcus and cephalococcus. But a patient who is having immunocompromised state or chronic ulceration or chronic uh, uh, infection in the uh, skin, there is a chance of gram negative organism come into picture. So, when we are treating about treating uh, uh, a cellulitis case, we should understand that in acute cellulitis, most of the time it is due to gram positive cocci like streptococcus or staphylococcus. A patient who is having hospital acquired infection or suspected hospital acquired cellulitis, then it is it can be gram positive cocci, but you have to remember about methicillin resistant staphylococcus. If it is a chronic lesion or immunocompromised status, we have to all, always think about gram negative organism also. This is mainly required for the treatment aspect. Now you can see here definitions, erysipelas means epidemis is involved, dermis infection you call it as cellulitis and subcutaneous tissue, deep fascia all you call it as necrotizing fasciitis. So depending on the layer of the skin involvement you can divide into erysipelas, cellulitis, necrotizing fasciitis. Here erysipelas is only a superficial infection that may not have systemic symptoms. Cellulitis is little deeper infection that has got some systemic features like fever, tachycardia all can be there. Whereas necrotizing, necrotizing fasciitis is a deep infection, patient can have all toxic features like sepsis. Erysipelas is an infection of upper layer of uh, skin that is epidermis. The most common cause is streptococcus bacteria, streptococcus pyogens. Necrotizing fasciitis is a rapidly spreading inflammatory infection of the fascia. Unlike other area infection, this spreads throughout the fascia and ultimately it leads to fasciitis and secondary necrosis, subcutaneous tissue infection, inflammation. All these things can be produced by necrotizing fasciitis. So, among all these three, necrotizing fasciitis is the most important uh, skin infection which can lead to sepsis, septic shock, all these things. Now the diagnosis from emergency medicine is very very important, it is mainly by clinical uh, feature. We will not be able to diagnose it with uh, uh, big investigations in emergency room. 
so localized localized erythema swelling tenderness warmthness so all the signs of inflammation can be seen in that area very mild systemic signs like fever tachycardia weakness can be there but if there is a deeper infection patient can have more profound clinical signs like fever with chills rigors hypotension shock septicemia features like tachycardia low uh, low uh, low uh, urine output like that you can see uh, different clinical pictures depending on the severity of infection now normally blood culture will not show any organism if it is uh, superficial skin infection less than 5% of the cases you can get a blood culture positivity but if the patient develops sepsis that means the bacteria from the skin enters to the blood circulation you can get higher amount of blood culture positivity it may vary up to 30% aspiration from the pus sometimes can uh, show uh, uh, growth but generally it is not done in every patient in emergency room we don't try to uh, send cultures from the uh, uh, skin lesions but if you are suspecting a typical uh, organism like if the patient coming from a different hospital with chronic ulceration in the legs before starting antibiotic it is it is better to take a culture from the uh, pus uh, in the skin normally we don't do chest x sorry x rays mri cts all this uh, detailed imaging studies will not be done in routine erysipelas or cellulitis but there are some clinical scenarios we may have to do ultrasound x rays of the uh, area of involvement mri of the area involved can be done in specialized situations like uh, a patient who is having cellulitis in the lower limb uh, when we do ultrasound we can see some uh, subcutaneous edema can be there or pus can be there or abscess can be there but remember one of the close differential diagnosis for cellulitis is deep vein thrombosis so when we do ultrasound simultaneously with same machine we can go for doppler study also so doppler study can rule out venous thrombosis deep vein thrombosis and we can also look for the patency of the veins or whether, whether any uh, any leaky veins are there or not we can find out so main thing ultrasound is done to rule out actually dvt ultrasound may not be recommended in acute emergency rooms because it's mainly a clinical diagnosis but to, to rule out uh, a deep vein thrombosis we have to do uh, ultrasound doppler x rays and mris are usually not recommended but if you want to make a diagnosis of osteomyelitis or necrotizing fasciitis then we can go for further scans like mri scan can be done otherwise routinely they are not recommended you can see the ultrasound uh, bedside ultrasound of the right leg cellulitis showing hyperechoic fat globules separated by hypoechoic fluid filled areas so fluid can be uh, filled in the fatty spaces fluid uh, uh, can separate the fatty globules so that is called as cobblestone appearance so cobblestone appearance is a classical finding you get uh, in patients who is having uh, cellulitis now you can see the clinical features like redness warmthness edema tenderness poorly demarcated margins in contrast to erysipelas which has sharply defined borders so uh, uh, here the borders will uh, become uh, poorly demarcated that is a important finding so when the infection spread spreads deeper deeper the mar- demarcation can be uh, faint now patient can have high degree fever confusion because of toxic encephalopathy tachycardia can be there it's a, it's a finding of uh, spreading infection tachypnea can be there maybe due to uh, infection or uh, acidosis patient develops lactic acidosis because of the hypotension hypotension can be seen in many patients so if the if they develop shock regional lymphadenopathy can be there in patient who is having infection in the legs they can uh, see the inguinal lymph nodes if the upper limbs are involved axillary lymph nodes are involved so like that lot of clinical findings can be elicited from the patient who is having cellulitis now if you have a patient who is having complicated infection like uh, when we see a cellulitis most of the time it is confined to the skin only but rarely patient can develop 
complication of that infection, the main important complication is spreading infection and toxemia that leads to shock like fever, hypothermia, tachycardia, hypotension, all these things can be there in patients who is having cellulitis with shock. Pain out of proportion to exam, that is very, very important. Edema in duration, pain extending beyond the area of skin involved. Bulle, cutaneous necrosis, tense edema, gas in the subcutaneous tissue, loss of sensation of the affected area, rapid progression despite antimicrobial therapy, deep purple maroon uh, discoloration of uh, area. All these things can be there in patient who is having cellulitis with complication. But remember, most important thing what we should remember in emergency room is whether the patient is going to shock or not. So, you know, you may be knowing about toxic shock syndrome. That is one of the complication of uh, severe cellulitis or deepening of the infection. Patient develops hypotension and shock because of the toxins produced by the bacteria. So, remember hypotension, shock, tachycardia, acidosis, all are very, very important clinical findings. Necrotizing fasciitis, again systemic toxicity, shock, pain out of proportion exam, severe edema, induration, pain extending beyond the area of skin involvement, bullet, cutaneous necrosis, gas in the subcutaneous tissue. That is very, very important. Gas forming organism can sometimes grow in the uh, infectious area. So, we have to tackle with separate antibiotics if gas is found. Loss of sensation in the affected area, rapid progression despite antimicrobial therapy, marked induration of subcutaneous tissue, crepitus that means gas is there, deep purple maroon discoloration. So all these things are the same what we discussed in the previous slide. So whenever we see a patient who is having unbearable pain in cellulitis or extending skin lesions or hypotension, shock, tachycardia, tachypnea, all these patients should undergo treatment in critical care area or ICU if they are admitted with cellulitis. So simple cellulitis without any major clinical findings, they can be treated as OPD patients or IP patients. But if they have any of the systemic complication, they should be admitted in ICU for further management. Now blood cultures are not routinely recommended in patients who is having uh, cellulitis, but if they are toxic, that means uh, the organism which has grown from the area and spreading through the blood uh, blood circulation, we have to take a blood culture or an immunocompromised patient we have to do and we have to, in that case we have to take blood culture or purulent discharge culture, biopsy culture, swabs from the ulcers, all these things are important. Now once we make a diagnosis of cellulitis, remember in a patient who is admitted to ER, we have to rule out DVT in a patient who is having cellulitis because DVT and cellulitis will have almost similar features except for the redness in the skin. Redness can be more in the uh, uh, superficial areas in cellulitis. It will be less in the deep vein thrombosis. But remember when we are having a doubt of deep vein thrombosis in mind, we will not be able to examine the patient's limb in detail because it can dislodge from there. So it is better to do an ultrasound or Doppler to confirm your diagnosis or to rule out deep vein thrombosis. Once you make a diagnosis of non purulent cellulitis, then we can uh, treat the patient with gram-positive coverage antibiotics. You know that it is mainly a gram-positive infection. So we can start uh, penicillin, cephalexin, that is first generation cephalosporin, dicloxacillin. Uh, that at present it is not available in India. We have flucloxacillin. Flucloxacillin can be started 500 to 1 gram uh, every 4th four, four hourly uh, or sorry every 6th hourly. So 4 times daily can be given. Flucloxacillin 500 to 1 gram uh, 4 times daily for 5 to 7 days is the treatment of choice in all the patients. Otherwise we can go for augmented that is amoxicillin clavulinic acid that covers most of the gram positive cocci with some gram negative coverage, it also uh, covers the skin infections. Now, clindamycin is another important drug which is used in gram positive cocci infection and it has got an advantage that patient, if the patient develops 
toxin producing cocci, gram positive cocci, the toxin production can be controlled by clindamycin. So, if the patient is having any toxic features, we have to add clindamycin to the regime. So, the routine regime in a simple infection or a simple cellulitis will be amoxicillin clavulinic acid or uh, flucloxilin. That flucloxilin will be the advised choice because it covers both the streptococcus and staphylococcus. It will not cover MRSA, but it covers MSSA. And clindamycin, which reduces the toxin production, so that also can be started. So, clindamycin routine dose is uh, 300 to 450 milligram uh, fourth hourly or 600 milligram TID. If you are suspecting MRSA, that means if the patient is coming from a different hospital or if the patient has got multiple admissions previously or the previous culture showed MRSA, then better to go for an MRSA coverage like clindamycin with cotrimaxol or doxycycline or linazolide. So, if there is a purulent pus discharge, then we have to better go for MRSA coverage in patients who is having cellulitis. Otherwise, routine antibiotics like flucloxacillin is the best choice. So, flucloxacillin covers gram positive caucus like streptococcus and methicillin susceptible uh, staphylococcus. If you are suspecting MRSA, go for cotrimaxol, doxycycline or linazolid. The, so, these are the options. Now, if you are suspecting anti pseudomonal, if you are suspecting pseudomonal infection, that means a chronic infection, patient is coming from a different hospital, previous culture showed pseudomonas, then we have to go for anti pseudomonal antibiotic like cephipime tazobactam combination, mepenem celestatin combination, meropenem can be started, loripenem can be started, piprasilin tazobactam can be called. So, all drugs will cover uh, pseudomonas. So, if you are suspecting MRSA, then linazolid or vancomycin can be started. But remember many patients who is having uh, severe skin infection, sepsis can have renal failure. So, vancomycin should be used with used carefully. If the patient is having sepsis with thrombocytopenia, use linazolid with carefully. So, because all these things are complication of the same drug, linazolid can produce thrombocytopenia, vancomycin can produce renal failure. So, if already there is a pre-existing disease like that, we should be uh, starting, we should start these drugs very carefully. Now, other supportive treatment like uh, if patient is having human or dog, cat bite, ampicillin, sulbactam combination can be given. If there is a fresh water infection, quinolones should be started because uh, you know, uh, bacteria, uh, some bacteria can be uh, like uh, Vibrio vulnificus that can be treated with uh, uh, quinolones. So, when the patient is admitted to emergency room, we have to always take care of airway, breathing, circulation. If the patient is having hypotension, put uh, large bore IV cannulas, IV fluids like normal saline, bringer lactate, look for reperfusion. All these things are there in emergency room, so we have to take care of that. All patients who is having cellulitis because they will not be able to move for first. Uh, uh, 48 to 72 hours. So, we have to use deep vein prophylaxis including uh, heparin uh, prophylaxis. If possible, elevate the affected limb so that the drainage will be faster. And urgent surgical consultation is most important because if the patient develops ne necrotizing fasciitis, then we have to intervene fast. So, surgical reference is very, very important. Patient treated with glycerin magnesium sulfate dressing, they respond better than normal saline dressing. We can give both normal saline dressing and glycerin and magnesium sulfate dressing. The patient who treated with glycerin with magnesium sulfate has got a better uh, prognosis than uh, normal saline alone dressing in many studies. So, many surgeons prefer glycerin magnesium sulfate dressing than normal saline dressing. So, we have discussed one of the most important complication of uh, skin infection that is cellulitis. Cellulitis is very, very common in our country because we have a lot of diabetic patients, lot of diabetic food patients and we have elephantiasis that is parasitic infection of the lymphatic system. All these patients due to chronic infection, they develop uh, uh, cellulitis. Remember, repeated cellulitis can occur in some patients. In that type of patients, we have to 
continue the antibiotic prophylaxis the patient may require long term antibiotic prophylaxis with oral penicillin v that is pendids is available 400 mg once daily can be continued for 4 to 6 months like uh, in infective endocarditis we treat for gram positive okay oral penicillin here also it is very very useful like a patient who is having elephantiasis filarial infection they have chronic uh, limb edema in the lower limbs and repeated uh, skin infections are very very common so those who have started on uh, oral prophylaxis their incidence of infections are coming down so we can prevent infection by oral penicillin in this type of patients or doxycycline can be tried because we, we, when we are talking about prophylaxis it has to cover gram positive okay and it should be cheaper also both oral penicillins and doxycyclines are cheaper drugs which can be continued for longer time without any major complications thank you